I am one of the chosen. This is the chosen race. Look at this earth and look at what's been created upon it. And look, what, this is the chosen race. It is me, my blood, my people. All right, to keep bare arms shall not be free. All of the thousands upon thousands of militia members all across this country. I mean, that says a lot, right? It's not we, the people anymore. It's them, the tyrannical, authoritarian bastards. Can you hold your camera? We, the little poor peasants that have had our mouth taped up and shut. One of the chamber, you know, it's always in there, you know. The ammunition's always in there. We, the ones that want to speak, are we the ones that lie dead in graves in prison? Nobody's going to take my babies away. Nobody. And if they ever try to do that, there's going to be death. Promise me. Last time on Eyewitness, we survived our first week with the Rocky Mountain Militia in Laverkin, Utah. Led by Johnny Bangerter. We were going to hold our guns and we'll shoot back. And his loyal follower, David Dalby. And they look at guns like this and they say, well, you don't need that for hunting. It's like, well, damn right, I don't need it for hunting. I need it for defending. They were both excited when they found out they've been named one of the most notorious hate groups in the state. When they're listing you and they got a personal grudge against you, that's when you know you are on the right track. But as their notoriety grows, we notice them becoming more suspicious of everyone around them, especially us. What's going on? Uh, it looks like I'm going to be tied up today, though. What do you got going? I don't pretty much need some privacy today. Getting in touch with Johnny is uh, very, very difficult. Johnny doesn't have a phone. Uh, he doesn't have a reg regular schedule. So the only way to really get in touch with Johnny is to go over to his place. So we pull up, Craig and I, and of course, as soon as we turn into the driveway, I mean, I'm hearing this thing coming over us. Oh, it's a low-flying helicopter. Who's that? Okay. That's Johnny with the gun. Yeah. Yeah. Get out. I'm waiting for him. Did you see the helicopter? Yeah. Or what? Yeah. What, what was that? I think it was either the FBI or somebody. They were flying around and they'd been around a few times and crossed over our house several times. So that's kind of unusual. We've become yet another source of information for these guys on their network. Did you notice the plane? Did you guys get any numbers off of it? In the chopper? Chopper? No, we, did, we, we actually... Uh, we actually didn't see him because, like you said, he was flying in low. We were coming from that way, and you, we, we couldn't see him until he was right on us. Yep. They're always one in the chamber, you know. It's, it's always in there, you know. The ammunition's always in there. But uh, <laughs> it wouldn't normally have to be like that. And this is for our government. Our federal employees that we pay for through our taxes the taxes they take unlawfully from my paycheck. And who is this in a white car? White car, is it the neighbor? Oh, it's just a neighbor. If they only knew. Me and Laura are just like caught up in the whole thing. And could it, is it a federal helicopter? Are they doing surveillance? There you go. What's going on, boys? Well, I was afraid that, uh, I was afraid somebody might be taking pictures of people with guns, and I wasn't involved. You see the bird that flew over? Uh-uh. You did it? Uh-uh. As soon as you left? Oh, I heard it. You did it fly right over you? Zeroed right over you and us all. Really? I heard him. Couldn't yeah. really see him, though. What you got there, Dave? Oh, my baby. Mini-14, the scope. 40-round clip. Flash suppressor. Illegal now. See, there's that van, that, that truck over there. What? Those are the ones I think it's fed. Right over there. Are they white with black tent? Yeah, I think that's the fed house. They always park tactically, you know. They always park on this side of their house. I just always find that unusual. You know? Look, Jonah. Look at Luca running from her house. Big trees. 
Barbara Bailey is one of Johnny's older sisters. She shares her family's beliefs, but she's probably one of the least vocal members. Let's just not talk about the humans. Let's talk about the birds. And, you know, there's really pretty red birds and there's yellow birds and blue birds. And I don't ever see the canaries and the robins in one nest, even though they're all birds. And should the birds be punished because all the canaries stay together and all the robins stay together. And it's good that the birds all know and they stay in their own nest because that's what keeps the yellow canaries beautiful. And that's what keeps the blue bird blue. <gasps> Look at the sweet boy. He had a little bird in his hand. Look Barbara has hand. two kids from a former marriage. Her ex-husband convinced a judge that she was dangerous and got custody of the kids. So now she can only see her children in controlled conditions. Only Jonah remains, the son that she has with her new boyfriend. Okay, this tape is, what I'm about to show you, is one of the pieces of evidence that my ex-husband Don used against me in court that helped. Um, get, he got custody of the children with, and this shouldn't happen to anyone because we should have freedom of religion. They're racists. They're proud of it. Aryan is what counts. It's a gene. And they're convinced there's a shootout coming with the police. They're the enemies to me. Federal and state law enforcement people we talked to said the Bangaders are not considered a serious threat. And so far, there's no reason to put them under surveillance. I haven't received my um, weekly calls from Don, uh, or the children, I should say. Barbara is allowed to talk to her children once a week. She's not allowed to call them, um, but there's a preordained day that they call her. And then they didn't call last week, they didn't call today. So what time is it now? Late. It's 7.27. But I always give it till 8 because 8 is 7 their time, you know. But they always usually call like between 7 and 7.15 my time. So, God. See, I could be, um, I hope they call. I, I really got to talk to them. Militia member Mary Lynn explains why her children are so special to her. See their little special Aryanness. You know, to me, that's very important. Their little blue eyes and their little blonde hair. She takes us along as she and Johnny's mother fly to New York to share their opinions on Geraldo. I'm jealous as hell. Okay. <laughs> For the people here, the two most important things are protecting their families and getting the word out. You know, a few words of mine were cut out. I know there, lot, there was a lot of segments in the last show that were cut out. That's fine with me. It's your show. When it comes to our show, then we'll do what we want. And when is it going to come to your show? <laughs> <laughs> Will you take the country back? I like messing with my dad. Where's my daddy? I'll take care of what I got to take Mary Lynn is another one of Johnny's sisters, and she is one of the most vocal people in the family. I just love being with my baby and I can't wait to have more. <laughs> and being that they're white just makes them all that much better. <laughs> you see their little special Aryanness, you know, and to me that's very important. Their little blue eyes and their little blonde hair or, or whatever, you know, not every little Aryan baby has blue eyes but mine does, so. So where are you going right now? Um, we are going right in there to uh, our doctor's office. And why are you going so early? Oh, because I had this hunch that I have twins, but there's no real sign. Just one of my dreams that I had. <laughs> and a lot of my dreams come true. And of course I want the best for my child. If my child became homosexual, that would almost be like my child died. Oh, yeah, done. No. Okay. Is everything with normal, so there's not two, there's just one, huh? Mm -hmm. 
That looks like it's sucking its thumb. See that? Oh, look at that. It's <laughs> kind of a cute picture. We'll take that one. Oh. <laughs> He's saying this thumb tastes pretty good right now. Okay. Thank well, you. Thank All you. Right. Okay, you have a We'll see you in a month. Okay. Okay. All, All right. right. You got it? Good boy, thank you. I got a call from my friend Christy and they wanted us to go on her all to show with them. She needs to put her stuff in here too. This is Marilyn's second trip to New York City. So they're kind of excited because it's going to be a sightseeing thing as well as you know getting their views across on national television. And hopefully we can reach someone, even one person out of the millions is good enough for me. What time did they say the limo would come? At 7.30. I'm not sure what time it is right now, but it should be getting pretty close right now. Hey, Mom. Uh, are you ready? Okay, the limo driver's here. We're just loading up the car. We're going to be stopping at my uh, mother's place. It's just right on, on the way. way. So we have right to take her out. I love you. Hey. <laughs> Laura's here with the camera. <laughs> oh, good morning, everybody. Mary is the mother of the Bangerter family and sort of of the movement here itself. Here. Oh, we got a little bar. Oh, wow, that's really nice. The phones, we can call you. I'm jealous as hell, okay? <laughs> See you later. I wish you were coming, Barbara. <laughs> She's very excited. Mary Lynn is in the car trying to prepare Mary for the culture shock she's about to receive. I don't want to ride a cab here, they rob you. <laughs> I don't know if they told you what all these cameras are on you or not. No. It's uh, CBS. They're doing a, like a news... Uh, what, documentary. How, a, a documentary on us. So, I just thought what, I'd let what, you know. <laughs> you're so famous to do the documentary? <laughs> Our religion. Oh, okay. Uh, we uh, believe in fighting for our freedom in our country. We support like local militias and things like that. And uh, we're racist. Things are getting pretty tense. The sheriff has a new plan to take Johnny in. We are smarter than try to arrest him at his house. We'll arrest him somewhere between his home and his job. But Johnny has another plan in mind. I'll just be a little more courteous and say, my weapon's chambered, loaded, and the hammer's back. And I'm not going to jail. And what did you pull me over for? What did you think when you heard about that uh, Mary Lynn and, and Mary were going to be on the show? Oh, well, I, I think it's good. I, I, I think they can say some good stuff. Uh, I, I hope they represent, I hope I'm doing a good job representing the movement right now. I hope they do a good job representing the movement. The newsletter is really important to Dave because it's his way of being important in the movement. Never doubt that a small group of thoughtful, committed people can change the world. Indeed, it is the only thing that ever has. It's me. Yep. It's me. What he does is he just writes about whatever subjects are uh, bothering him that month, and he just kind of goes on. They hate me for this the worst, you know. They just hate it because it exposes them. I have to admit, at first, I didn't really read it. Um, I guess, uh, in a way, I was scared to. It's my opinion. It's for, you know, exercising my First Amendment. It's a little bit to the left. Too much to the left. Okay, how many did you want? 500. 500? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so he's excited about his new jail, huh? Yeah. Well, whatever. He's, he's, this is his idea, the old egg thing. Uh, the sheriff is very proud of the new jail and loves the name, and that's basically taking up most of his time. What a great name for a jail, huh? Purgatory. You're really 
take him with the name. <laughs> <laughs> I am definitely. I, I had to make, uh, they wanted to just call it Washington County Correctional Facility, and I had to fight pretty hard to get them to put that purgatory on there. So they're going to have to go to purgatory to go yeah. and see the see your prisoners in jail. Yeah, they all have these ideas. Yeah, there will be a purgatory. So you're halfway <coughs> between heaven and hell, see? Yep. And so that's where they're at when they're in purgatory flats and that. This right here, I'll give you an idea of what the, what the bedding is going to be like. This here is the bedding. This is what we're going to be using in the jail for bedding. That's what you're using for bedding? <laughs> this is, uh, yeah, it's ACLU approved, too. I don't think I'll ever stay there. Huh? I don't think I'll ever stay there. None of us, I don't think. Can't wait to get started. The sheriff and Johnny have, have a pretty unique relationship, I think, and on both sides of the law. Johnny probably needs to go to purgatory for a little time to cool his jets, get back to reality. Recently, Johnny got pulled over for what should have been a routine traffic stop. But Johnny being who he is, he doesn't have a driver's license, he always carries a gun, things escalated and got a little out of control. Uh, right now, we're waiting to see how far that situation is going to escalate. And what happens if he doesn't appear? If he doesn't appear, then we'll, we will arrest him. But we are smarter than try to arrest him at his house. We'll arrest him somewhere between his home and his job. They're waiting for me to screw up, and I think they're waiting to arrest me tomorrow. If he's smart at all, he'll appear and make it, make it good, pay his fine and be on his way. Because mm -hmm. if he if don't, it's just, it'll just be more, pro more trouble for him. Somehow they know they have to get along to pre prevent a disaster. It's more than likely I'll probably be stopped again by the cops. And they're going to try to take me to jail again. Because this time I'm not going to take my weapon out of my holster and be courteous. And I will not have it unloaded for their courtesy this time. I'll just be a little more courteous and say, my weapon's chambered and loaded and the hammer's back. And I'm not going to jail. And what did you pull me over for? For some of the people we've met, the Rocky Mountain Militia is a beacon of hope. I don't know, it straightened me out a little bit, got me up, kept me away from trouble. I used to be hardcore into drugs. As for its leader, Johnny Bangerter, he has what he considers to be a winning strategy. To win a battle out here would just cost him so much. I mean, it, it would cost him a lot of lives. It would cost him a lot of helicopters. And they still wouldn't win. So this is the shipment you've been waiting for. Well, this is a shipment. <laughs> Box finally arrived. That we'd long been waiting for, and inside contained tiger stripe camo uniforms for the Rocky Mountain Militia. What are you going to do with that? I'll probably give it to Johnny. Hey, what's going on, brother? Not much. How you doing? Is this your first time in the militia? Yeah. I don't know, it straightened me out a little bit, got me, kept me away from trouble. I used to be hardcore into drugs. And my hair was all the way down to my butt. Didn't really care about the way I looked. Hey, how's it going? What's going on? Good evening. How are you? Just fine. Good. So you guys got some stuff in this order? Uh, they did. I can afford nothing yet. Not yet. You will, though. Hopefully the tax returns I'll get. Some stuff. He got a poor man order. Nothing. Where are you guys headed? Property, buddy. Oh. Top secret. We could tell you, but then we must kill you. Ah, Johnny. Hey, speaking of the devil. Hey, Johnny. 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 Johnny doesn't care if they're in uniform. The most important thing to Johnny is that they're ready to take action and that they're, they're committed to the group. Isn't it nice to be loved? Uh, yeah. <laughs> well, they you know, really don't want the move to look bad when they see my house all over their tattered flag flying after the last shootout. Keep it new. Uh, <laughs> Johnny looks at the land around here pretty differently from most people. We're now at the bottom of the Mojave Desert Badlands. 
The only thing is, it's kind of scary about it. there's all these rattlesnakes and stuff in there. He looks at the land in terms of defensive and strategic positions. You're now at the top of the Grand Canyon when you get the bottom of the Mojave Desert Badlands. This is the top of the Grand Canyon. We're almost over to the cracks, though, the crack section. There's huge cracks on the top of this rim here. I'm excited because here we are at the cracks now. These are the cracks. These cracks come back from the edge of the canyon and they go all the way back. The cracks are good areas to train in. Got it. Here come a helicopter flying right over and he wouldn't even see the crack until he's right upon it. Want to hold your camera? Yeah. Don't even think about it, Amanda. Just jump. It's a long drop. It's a long drop if you go. It's, come, it's overcoming that something, you know, that says self-preservation. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Most people won't recognize a good uh, defendable area. For them to, to, to win a battle out here, would just cost them so much. I mean, it, it would cost them a lot of lives. It would cost them a lot of helicopters. And they still wouldn't win. Just like the Soviets fighting the Mujahideen. They lost a lot. And once they realized that we're not gonna lose, then uh, maybe they'd give up. Next time on Eyewitness, the women of the Rocky Mountain Militia head to New York City for an appearance on Geraldo. The Jews do not have homeland. They claim that they do, but they do not. In Utah, Johnny's stressing out that our presence is bringing him too much attention from the police. Even since you guys have gotten here, the cops are just, they're just getting more cops, and uh, it's all for us. And a Rocky Mountain militia member offers up some advice to his fellow Americans. Get a gun, keep it loaded, get more, get, get more ammo, store it, get a food storage. I said buy some property in the mountains and take off.